Educational Insights, a Superintendent's Podcast. Hosted by Brooke Olson Farrell. Episode number six, discussion with FHU MHS co-principal, Mr. Ben Worthing. Hello, Slate Valley. Brooke Olson Farrell, Superintendent of Slate Valley, here with... Ben Worthing, co-principal of the Fairhaven Union Middle High School. Um, and we're gonna kick off our series on um, the schools in, in Slate Valley. So Ben, can you just give us a brief introduction about yourself and your role as principal here? Sure. Um, so first I'll just talk about myself. I, uh, I've, I've been in education now for probably 24, 25 years. Um, my background is science and um, came in as a science teacher right here. I actually started here as an instructional aide and then became a case manager in special ed, uh, and then became a science teacher. Uh, so I've spent my whole career right here at Slate Valley and in the last um, several years have gone into administration. I did one year as an assistant principal at Essendon Village School and have been here as a principal and co-principal since. And, um, you know, my background has really technically was in pure science. I, I didn't start off in education. When I moved to Vermont um, about 25 years ago, I wanted to try out education and I wanna say within two weeks in the school, fell completely in love with it and felt like I just, I found my calling and haven't turned back since. So that's great, Ben. So can you talk a little bit about your the key principles that guide your work? Mm -hmm. uh, so first off, is, and I always say this is I, I love people. I'm a, I'm a people person. I'm in this because I really care about being a part of of someone's future. And I, and I love being able to work with children. I love being able to work with the families and hopefully instilling a sense in them that you know, they have someone here that really is kind of acting like a parent when they're not with their parent because that's that's how I feel about every kid here, that they're just part of my humongous family and I, I just really love working with people. Great. So there's some really awesome things happening here at Fairhaven Union Middle and High School. Can you talk a little bit about some of the current initiatives and programs that you're most proud of? Sure. I think the biggest one, uh, right when I started here in this role, uh, worked really hard with the teachers to identify like what is, if, if we could take a long mission, how do we whittle it down to a very simple message? And as a group, we said, what we really value here is academic rigor, building relationships and making sure that what we're teaching here is relevant to students in their lives. So we say rigor, relevance and relationships. Um, what we're doing to focus on those pieces uh, is really the heart of, of my work here. So we, we hold pretty steadily to the idea that you, rigor isn't where you really start. You start by building strong relationships with students and making the content relevant. So we have a lot of initiatives to build the, those relationships. We're, we're pushing hard towards restorative practices. So we think of our school as, as not a place where a student comes and makes mistakes, behavioral mistakes, and it's kind of a catch you, but it's more of a, this is a great opportunity. Like this is completely age appropriate. And we're gonna capitalize on this opportunity to teach uh, these expectations and like, how do you handle things in life? And we do that in a way that helps to build the relationships and draw kids into the community rather than pushing anybody away. Uh, the relevance is, is something that has been a district-wide initiative, which is uh, every class, every teacher taking their content and finding out how they can connect it to a larger community and make it relevant to a student's life. And the rigor piece is something that I'm particularly proud of with what we've been doing here is we're using a process called DataWise. And what it is, is it's a framework for teachers to work within where they are taking their student data, what they're seeing in the classroom, and using that to inform them of what they need to do as a teacher to improve their practice and make uh, their lessons and their units that much stronger, that much more impactful on their students. 
So I want to expand on um, something you said. Um, relationships are really important here at um, the Fairhaven Middle and High School. And so building off the district initiatives around community engagement, how do you, how does that, those relationships mesh with the district initiative around community engagement? Sure. Uh, so I guess I first I would say like, Without getting too off topic from that question, some of the things that we're doing on relationships sure. that I think are more big picture, uh, we have a group called the Belonging Group, and the idea is this is uh, we're trying to create a space where everyone feels they belong. Uh, we have a student group that's run by one of our teachers here. We also have a community group where we have community potlucks about once every month or so. And the idea behind the potluck is drawing in our families and community members. Uh, to really focus on like how do we as a community support our students and building uh, a space where everyone feels they belong. Another initiative that we've just started this year, it's fresh this year, is we've brought in a national uh, group called uh, No Place for Hate, which is run by one of our counselors here. And that's been a, a really nice success so far this year. And it gives us an opportunity to uh, look at how do we create an environment not that is just saying where everyone belongs, but where we also respect the cultural differences and we create a space where we don't have um, these feelings of, of conflict. And if we do, that we have a, a productive means for addressing those. Um, another initiative that we're looking at, we're just in the baby steps, the baby stages of developing is peer mediation. And I would love to, down the road, uh, incorporate that with our community, like how do we draw in stakeholders in our community to see how our students are trained to mediate conflicts between each other and how they can even become involved in that mediation. Okay. So you also spoke a bit about rigor. Mm -hmm. So how do you define rigor here at the high school and how do we define academic excellence or student success? So in the educational world, we have this whole thing called zone of proximal development. Uh, to kind of simplify that, what we're looking to do is you, you, you look at a student, every student has this, this zone where they're ready to really be challenged. And our job as a teacher is to push them a little past that and then come back and push them past that and come back. You don't want to constantly be past that because uh, that's when students start to feel like they're not having success and they start to maybe not be as engaged. And our job uh, as teachers is to constantly try to find that spot of challenge for every individual student. So for some of our students, there's that, that zone where they can be challenged are advanced placement classes. So we've been increasing our AP courses here over the last few years. Uh, dual enrollment, we're encouraging students to utilize Castleton, CCV, a number of different uh, Vermont colleges to get some college credits. We're also looking at um, different layers to each of our course. So we could say like maybe one student is ready for uh, an upper level advanced placement. Another student, their challenge is at a different spot. And so we're creating, we're making sure that we have a continuum of courses within a content area that can meet the challenge of each kid. And then it's the role of the teacher in that class to be able to break it down even further to each individual student and be able to say like, this student is ready to go here, whereas this one needs maybe some more scaffolding and building to get to that spot. Great, thank you. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the role of testing and state assessments? Um, in the overall <laughs> academic picture? Sure. Um, one of the key examples I would use to talk about that is something that we're doing with DataWise. So I'll kind of link something I was talking about before. Uh, we do STAR assessments, and it's a great opportunity for us to see where a student is progressing throughout the year. So. Data-wise, our departments will identify an area where they feel like students need some specific strategies. Our high school English department has recently switched theirs, 
their goals of what they wanted to work on with students based on the STAR assessments. So they're taking real-time data and saying, okay, their original goal was working with um, grammar and usage, but through that data, they were able to say, actually, vocabulary acquisition is a, a real big struggle right now. So they're they're taking that data and using it to shift their instructional goals. So now they are looking at how do we incorporate uh, vocabulary strategies? Um, and I know in the past, um, well, it's the second year of having the middle school students mm -hmm. together up here on the high school campus. And how has that integration gone between the middle school and the high school? So last year was what we thought it would be, I think. Sometimes when, when you're thinking about it before it happens, you know the problems and struggles you're going to face, but it's not until you live it that you realize how big they are. So last year was a growing year. We really addressed a lot of struggles, a lot of challenges that we knew were, were coming. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I believe the success we're seeing this year in large part is because of living through those struggles and adjusting to where we see the needs. And what we're finding this year is uh, that we're having a, a lot more success, that we're having, um, I, I feel like we're kind of have found our groove. We have uh, Jen Paulcat as a co-principal who's amazing at the middle school and that's another big factor. We have a, a fantastic middle school teams as well. So I think the pieces have really are falling in and I think overall it's been very successful. We're you know, I think some of the points of pride around that exemplify that is uh, before, if we had an eighth grade student that wanted to take Algebra 1, they were ready for that challenge level. Our only option was online, and that's not, we found it wasn't a great way of teaching that. Now we're, we're doing it in person. Uh, I would say extracurriculars are huge. We have a large amount of student enrollment in clubs like uh, our drama productions have a whole bunch of middle school students in it and they work together with high school and we've also identified areas where we we want to like age appropriately keep them apart so we have just middle school or just high school so i think we've really found our groove in and how we have integrated the middle school that's wonderful so are there any like academic achievements or success stories i know you've hit on a couple that you really really want to highlight for us today mm -hmm. Uh, so I would say, uh, aside from what I talked about earlier, some of those successes that are, they, you know, relate to the academic success, but the successes through um, how we work through discipline and behaviors, uh, I'm, I'm definitely, I think that's something that we've spent a lot of time growing with. Uh, academic success, I think being able to look at what the student needs are and adjust our classes. So uh, the last few years, we've changed up quite a few courses based on student needs, student academic needs. Uh, one of the ones that I'm really proud of is our Outdoor Pursuits program, which is a ninth grade program that is, um, I would describe it as an adventure ed, experiential education program, where students are integrating their math, science, and PE, PE credits into a program where they're also going out hiking, kayaking, rock climbing, learning how to build fires with nothing but a stick and, and a little bit of um, I don't know, shavings or however they do it. I watched them do it. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> um, I, I'm really proud of that because it's, it's just a good example of how we stay flexible as a school to be able to adjust to a student's needs. Yeah, absolutely. So as... <clears throat> We're halfway through the school year. Do you see any challenges right now that you're that you're trying to, you know, grapple with? Yeah, I think that's the world I live in. Is <laughs> as a principal, you're always trying to find the challenges and to get ahead of them, figure out solutions. So, um, one I would say is looking at developing a civics class. So I've been working with our social studies department uh, and looking at how do we bring in uh, a course that has students more involved in 
the civic process. So a lot of the conversations have focused around uh, what I think some states do. They do like a participation in government where students are uh, literally going to select board meetings, school board meetings. And I, and I think what we see here is um, an opportunity to get students more involved in that process. And we see a little bit of a lack of involvement. Uh, so that'd be, I think, one area that we're really looking at. Uh, another one that we're, we're working on, and, and it's also a great opportunity, is developing our portrait of a graduate. So what we're looking at is what do we want our Slaters to have when they graduate from here? And some of those pieces are around, focused around the needs, like where do we see um, our students having the most needs? So it could be something uh, to the effect of like communication skills where when you graduate from here, do you walk out of here with a resume and the ability to sit down at a table with potential employers and, and um, drive that conversation in an effective way where you're really opening up your future to all kinds of different uh, job opportunities and college opportunities. Yeah. So is there anything that I haven't touched on that you'd like to um, discuss today? I, the other one I think that I haven't really talked about is we're really looking at the technology at Fairhaven and how we integrate uh, some more cutting edge technology into classrooms. So one of the programs that we've developed over the past two years is, is a graphic design um, or graphic art program. So that didn't exist uh, two years ago. Now we have a pretty robust program. Uh, we have a teacher that's bringing in a lot of real world uh, experience and and so that's a great opportunity for students to start learning how to use Photoshop, Adobe, all these um, really important components and technology. We also, at the middle school level, have um, students working through a curriculum on coding. They're building their own games. I was just in a classroom the other day watching them uh, make a reading. They had to develop, their goal was to develop a reading game that was aimed at eight-year-olds. So they had to not only know the coding skills, but also be able to make something that wasn't intended for them, but for a different audience, which I think is a really cool skill for them to develop. So the, the technology here, we're, we're always kind of racing to stay where it is. So when they leave, when students leave here, they're taking some really uh, great life skills with them they can use in the workforce. Great, great fabulous. So thank you, Mr. Worthing, for joining me today. Um, until next time, Slate Valley. Slate Valley Unified Union School District, March 2024.